Okay, and uh, for those who may or may not be curious, I'm um, making reference to the movie Howard the Duck. I don't know how many of you have seen Howard the Duck. It's this crazy movie from the 80s where an alien duck who's capable of talking comes down to Earth and saves the world. There's a picture of Howard the Duck in the right corner there. Um, there's more. There's a more general lesson, though, in what we were just doing, and that's um, the ability to distinguish premises from the conclusion in any particular argument. And the way we go about distinguishing premises from the conclusion is the same sort of method that we did in this Howard the Duck argument. We use context clues. All those words surrounding the sentences that make up the argument, a word like because indicates to us what the author thinks the relationship between the particular sentences that make up the argument should be. And in particular, we're looking for the logical relationship between the arguments. Which sentences are supposed to be providing logical support, being offered up as evidence? Which sentences are being offered up as main points that are supported by other sentences? This will let us know if we're dealing with a main point or a conclusion, or if we're dealing with premises, that is, evidence or reasons. So it turns out there are a bunch of different words that you can use to indicate um, in this way, either that a premise is about to happen or that a conclusion or main point is about to happen. Some really common premise indicators include the words because, like we just noticed, a word like since, since my um, shoes are converse and since my shoes are cheap, um, therefore I conclude that my shoes are awesome. Um, due to, when you say due to the following reasons, something like that could be a premise indicator. For the following reasons could always be a premise indicator as well. And there are other words or phrases out there that indicate a conclusion or a main point is about to happen. Um, so conclusion indicators include words like therefore, thus, hence, as a result, so, it follows that all of these are nice phrases that we can use to help us figure out, ah, a conclusion is about to happen. One quick side note about the word conclusion. It has um, a couple different meanings. Um, conclusion could mean the very last thing you say, or conclusion in this context, the way we're using it in this class, could mean the main point that you happen to say. So, for instance, in the argument we just gave about Howard the Duck, that was an argument, let's actually move back to it, where the conclusion came first. So, it wasn't the conclusion as in the very last thing that you say um, in this argument, but it was the conclusion as far as the main point, in that this was the thing the author of this argument was offering up as something to be proven, and all the rest of that argument was used to provide support for it. So that might um, confuse you a little bit. Make sure to know conclusions in this context of an argument mean the main point, not always the very last thing that you say. Okay. Now, our goal in class is going to be first and foremost, to understand what it is we read. And by and large, that's going to amount to taking what you find in our textbook and converting it into a nice, neat, formal premise conclusion format, like um, I've just been showing you a little bit. Um, this is going to be a skill hopefully we develop throughout the entire semester, and I don't expect you to be perfect at it right away. You might come to class having read some particular thing that we're supposed to read, like, I don't know, our Rene Descartes reading on what knowledge is and how we can go about learning and knowing anything, and it might be really confusing to you. But hopefully, through these lectures, through our discussions online, through our discussions in class time, it will become more obvious what the meaning of that article is that we read. And we are going to try to pull specifically those arguments that the philosophers we read offer up in support of their conclusions. That's what we're going to be looking at more than anything else. And I really think this is an important skill. This requires 
a good amount of reading comprehension, but also the ability to understand specifically this skill of distinguishing premises from conclusions. Um, and this is a worthwhile skill for just about anything else you're going to be doing. People are going to be presenting you arguments for the rest of your life for all sorts of things. And it's useful to be able to recognize what those people's main points are and what their reasons are. So you can actually figure out for yourself afterwards whether those are good reasons or bad reasons in support of their conclusion. Now, I've offered an optional extra credit assignment on the course website. If you go to Pulse and you go to the Assignments folder, there is um, this extra credit assignment called Understanding Lengthier Arguments. There are, I think, 11 arguments there, and for the first nine of those arguments, um, the directions ask you to underline each conclusion in that argument and circle any indicators, that is, premise indicators or conclusion indicators. Those words or phrases we just talked about, like because, therefore, as a result, due to. Um, I'll let you know right now that most arguments on this assignment have only one premise or conclusion indicator, and some actually don't have any at all, so you're not going to be doing a lot of circling. Um, maybe just one for each argument, and for some, none at all. Um, this is going to be due at the beginning of class next Thursday, March 18th. So I hope you, uh, I'll give you uh, plenty of time to do that. Um, the directions for numbers 10 and 11 on the homework assignment are a little bit different. I want you to write out in your own words what you think the conclusion is for each one of those arguments. Arguments 10 and 11 are a little bit longer than some of the other arguments on the piece of paper, the handout. And um, the conclusions um, for both of those arguments might not be explicitly stated, so you might have to sort of word those conclusions, um, phrase those conclusions in your own words. All right. Um, best of luck. See ya.